What's up everyone, this is Erica with Hooking You Up, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do the daisy version of the boho tanks. If you've guys seen my videos or your subscribers, you might have already seen my sunflower version. Now I'm going to show you how to do the daisy version. Um, this video was highly requested by a handful of people, so I really hope you enjoy. So what you'll need is some yellow yarn. This is Craft Smart, my favorite yarn. Some white yarn and then any base color. I already have all eight of my squares here. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna show you how I do the um, granny square and then we'll put them all together. It's the same exact method as the sunflower boho tanks except we're doing daisy granny squares. And the reason I decided to do another video, even though they're similar uh, tutorials, is because not everyone is subscribed to my channel who watches my tutorials. So if they're coming in, if just looking for a daisy top and not a sunflower top, they'll be able to follow this tutorial and make their own top. So anyways, I am a little congested under the weather so I apologize for the heavy breathing or the nasally voice but we're gonna go ahead and get started this top is just the regular standard version which consists of eight squares so you want to make sure two four six you have eight squares all right if you wanted to make a long version you can have a total of 12 squares and then go back to my long version boho tank tutorial and see how to put them all together and we can go from there so let's get started all right so we're going to bring in our yellow yarn first and start by making a slip knot just like all my other flower tutorials we're going to start by chaining four And we're going to slip stitch in that first chain by the tail. Chain two. And now we're going to make 12 double crochet inside the center hole. I also want to mention I'm planning on redoing my Boho Sunflower Tank, the original standard tutorial because I, the video was kind of long. I didn't have the frame set up right, so if you turn the phone horizontally, you wouldn't be able to, um, it wouldn't be full screen, if that makes sense. So anyways, I'm planning, and I had um, a lot of mess ups and mislabeling certain stitches, so I just want it to be perfect. I am going to leave it on my channel because a lot of people did benefit from that tutorial. However, I'm going to be making a remake where I have the camera um, quality better and um, hopefully less lengthy. All right, once you have 12, we're going to slip on the top of that first double crochet, chain one, and clip off. Next, we're going to bring in our white, start with a slip knot, insert where we left off on the top of that first double crochet, pulling our white yarn through, chaining one, and now we're going to knot, like I always do, that tail for added security, chain three. We're going to yarn over twice, insert in that same hole, pull the loop through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over twice, insert in that same loop, or in that same hole, pull the loop up, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over twice, insert. Pull the loop up. Yarn over, pull through two. 
yarn over pull through two. Once you have four loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all four. Chaining one in between each petal. Again, yarn over twice, insert on the top of that next double crochet, pulling our loop up. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over twice, insert, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over twice, insert, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all four. And you're going to continue this until you have 12 total petals, so I'll meet you guys there. Once we're at our 12, we're going to still make a chain one, and we're going to insert, excuse me, we're going to slip stitch on the top of that first double crochet, chain one, clip. Now, we're going to bring in our green yarn or whatever base color you're using. We're going to make a slip knot. Insert in the middle of any of the petals. I like to start where I left off. So just in the center hole, pulling our green through. Chaining one. We're going to double tie our tail for extra security, chain two, and now we're going to start by making our first corner, which consists of a chain two and two double crochet, chain one. Now we're going to make three double crochet in that same hole, and this is how we work our first corner. Now we're going to make three double crochet in between the next two petals. Chain one. Chaining one in between each set of double crochets. Three more double crochet in between the next set of petals. So your work should be looking like this. Now we're working our next corner, three double crochet, chaining one, three double crochet in that same hole. Make sure you're chaining one in between each set, chain one, and now we're working our next side. So this is what it should look like. So this is what my square looks like. We're working our first row and then we'll work our second row. So you're going, the question is how will I make my size, my correct size to fit my, my body, especially the chest area since that's the main coverage point. So you're going to make enough squares that will cover your entire breast. So this size is a size small. Now, sizes will vary depending on the weight of yarn you're using and also the size hook you're using. I'm using a 5.75 and I'm using Craft Smart yarn from Michaels. Um, I can't think of the weight off the top of my head. I'll have it somewhere on the screen when I edit this video. Anyway, so this is a size small and it consists of three rows, but this weight is also slightly smaller than this weight, as you can see. So it will vary. So what you want to do is just make sure that you are measuring um, as you work the rows to see how much it covers you. Um, 
covers your chest area. I'll have an example video somewhere on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. So anyways, so anyways, we're just going to keep going, mimicking each side. So in between each corner side, between each corner, excuse me, you'll want to see two sets of three double crochet. So we're we'll in our third side. And I'll meet you guys for row two. All right, so we're ending our first row. And now we're going to slip on the top of that first double crochet we started with that second double crochet, and then also slipping in that chain one space. Chain two, and now we're working our second row, first corner. Again, we're going to make two double crochet with that chaining two, making three. Chain one, three double crochet, And now the first row will, will be the only row that consists of three sets of double crochet in the round. For the second row and wherever whatever row you end with, only the corners are going to consist of three double crochet. The center, the sides will consist of two double crochet. So let me show you. You can see in the first round, we only have three sets of double crochet. In the second round and the third round, we have our three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet for the corners. However, the sides consist of two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, and so forth. So you want to make sure you repeat that. So I am going to, because I did three rows for this one as well, I am going to continue, meet you guys at the end of three rows. So make however many rows you need for the coverage that you're looking for, and I will meet you guys for the next part. All right, once you have your eight squares, now we're going to put them together. making sure the tail ends are facing inside. So these are the back side, these are the front side. All your squares should be equal. Then we're going to fold the two sides corner to corner. And then making sure the petal is facing out. And this is what it should look like. Okay, so the sides should be, this side should be connected to the back. This side. This side should be connected to the front. So you're going to take your tapestry needle and start sewing up the sides. All right, making sure to line up the sides evenly so you're weaving in each side evenly so you're only going to be weaving in through the outer side so I'm going to go in to my chain one space and as you can see I have my chain one spaces lined up and my three double crochet chain lined up so we're only going to go through the outer sides pull Pull, pull, 
even the chain won't space only the outer side pull and keep going till you reach the end all right since I started with the side first now I'm going to flip it and using that same tail wait no wrong side If you don't have a tail on a corner that you need, just add your own. So again, I'm going to make sure these sides are lined up. I'm going to start where that chain one space is. I'm going to insert on the outer stitch of that first double crochet, the outer stitch of that second until I reach my end. Same with the chain one spaces. All right, you can always pull it a little bit. That will just make sure there's no gaps. All right, so you'll mimic the other side the same way. And then you'll also do the sides. Flip it over, do the back sides, and then we'll go on to the next part. Once you've connected all your sides, it'll look like this. And now this next part, it's optional, but I've been doing it a lot more on all my tops. If you want any extra coverage here um, and on the sides, this is a great addition. So anyways, I'm going to bring in my yarn make a slip knot and I usually start on the sides I'll start right here in between in this corner bring the slip knot through again chain one tie for extra security chain two and now let me show you really quick so it's all going to consist of um, the same as the squares, the corners being three sets of, or two sets of three double crochet, and the sides will still consist of two. On the armpit ends, we'll have, as we work our way down, we'll only have one double crochet and then continue on. So I'll show you once we get there. Since we're starting in the armpit, I'm going to do one double crochet here. Now I'm going to make two double crochet in between the next set of double crochets. Chain one, two, continue up until we've reached the top. All right, once we reach the top, again, we're going to make three double crochet. Chain one, three more double crochet. And now let's work our way down until we hit that next corner. Now, once we work our way in the center, and we'll mimic the other center as well, we are going to do one double crochet in that corner, chain one, and now one double crochet in that next corner. 
that will create, once you weave these in, it'll be more clear, but that'll create a center hole as so, right here on both sides. So you're going to mimic that for the next side as well. All right, so I will see you guys once we go all around onto the back side and then end back where we started, right here. All right, so you're looking for that chain one space. We're going to work on the right side. Even you're going to flip over and start on the right side for the other side as well. So, we're going to insert our working yarn, chain one, tie that back for extra security, and usually I do a chain of between 26 and 30 for sizes all across the board. Now, if you're making a custom order, I will show you how to measure a good strap. You can always measure a strap of your favorite fitted tank top, or you can measure where your peck is in the front to where your uh, scapula is in the back. Anyways, I'm going to do a chain of 20 six so once we made our chain we're going to flip it over and you're going to find the left side of that chain one and you're going to pull that chain through all right, keeping everything nice and tight, you're going to skip that chain one and insert your hook on the right side of that double crochet and slip. You're gonna slip in that first chain and then all the way down until you reach back the other side. So once you've worked your way down, Again, you're going to skip that chain one, and you're going to slip on the other side. Make sure to pull tight, chain one, and snip a good size tail off. I like to pull that really tight, and then just weave it to the back. That way I can weave these two tail ends together. All right, so pretty. I love the daisy version. Anyways, I already jumped ahead and did the fringe. It's so time consuming, but basically you can make your fringe as long as you would like. What I usually do is I just kind of gauge how long I would want, want it by measuring like this and then just cutting and then I'll just make even strings and the way I the way I put it in is through the bottom up or through the inside out so let me see if I can zoom in here Just like that in every single stitch and for the chain one spaces I just go under
And you can always cut your fringe to be all even at the very end. However, this is what we're looking like. Super cute. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Keep liking the videos. It'll help your girl out. Keep sharing the videos, comment, commenting in the comments really helps as well. Let me know how you love this video. And if you guys choose to sell them, please add me as the original pattern creator in your description so I can get some credit for that. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next video. Peace.